Hello and welcome to your Urban Connection. Remember, this is the channel that is often imitated, but is never duplicated. Now, I want to talk with you all today about a topic that's been a very hot topic for the last week or so. And it revolves around a black female who was the CEO of Grace Med, which is a medical facility that now operates about 16 or 17 facilities uh, in the state of Kansas. Now, the CEO is a woman by the name of Venus Lee. And Mrs. Lee has been at this organization for about 14 years. Uh, she started out, I believe, as a COO and uh, has worked her way through until January of 2020 when she was elevated to the position of CEO. Now, about a week ago, or two weeks ago, her credentials were questioned by an investigative reporter, an online reporter, who had gotten received uh, information that Mrs. Lee did not possess a couple of degrees, one being a THD degree from Emory University, University, and another degree, a master's degree, I believe, from Wichita State University. It is alleged that she did not actually obtain those degrees. As she had claimed, she did, and I assume this claim was made uh, on her resume. And I don't know, but I want to attempt to clear up the air today because here lately in the last couple of days, there have been an awful lot of rumors floating around and opinions floating around. Some are true and some are false. So I want to attempt to do what I can do to clear up some misinformation that seems to be roaming around here. And let me say before I begin, I reached out through a mutual, I don't know, let me say I do not know Mrs. Lee personally. I have never met her. But before doing this story, I reached out through a mutual friend of myself and Mrs. Lee to extend an invitation for her to come on this show and give her side of the story unedited. And I have not heard back from her. Now, I will be as fair as I possibly can, but I do need to give you my unsure-coded version of what as best I can observe and ascertain is the real issue here. Now, first of all, I want to say this. You know, a lot of talk has been made and mentioned about whether or not a mistake was made or if a lie was told. And I want to tell you the difference, ladies and gentlemen. I want to clear this up right now. You can make a mistake and retain and maintain your credibility. But if you tell a lie and you're caught, you lose your credibility. And when you put information either on an application for a job or a resume, and that information that you put down is false, you must be informed and almost every application I've ever filled out, somewhere on that application says, if you provide information that is inaccurate or false, that is reasons or grounds for termination, ladies and gentlemen. It's as simple as that. So when you fill out a resume, or you fill out an application, 
basically what you're doing is you're selling yourself. And you sell yourself in two ways. One is you're selling your talents and your skills, or you can say your qualifications for this particular job. And you're also selling your credibility. Credibility in the corporate world is just as big, just as much a selling point as are your skills and your uh, talents. So you're selling two things. One, credibility is more important in the corporate world than the other. So quite a few of the uh, uh, messages that I've read on the internet, Facebook in particular, have said that she perhaps was guilty of making a mistake. A mistake is survivable. Loss of credibility is very, very seldom survivable. Take the case in point, we've seen some of our politicians and business people falsely state that they have served in military services in positions which they were later found out not to have served in, almost to a T. Those people were terminated from their positions. So I want to point that out. And I also want to say that, you know, a lot of the, the messages that I saw on Facebook mentioned the fact that she was qualified. Well, let me tell you what qualified means. If the job that you're applying for requires that you have a certain amount of education, such as a master's degree, a doctor's degree, or whatever, and you don't have that, you're not qualified for that particular job, ladies and gentlemen. And if you falsify your resume or your application to get the job, don't be surprised when you you're caught up. Okay, when your 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 truth is revealed. So now let's get into this. I want to say this: I'm not here to assign guilt or innocence on the part of Mrs. Lee, but I am here to say that I hope that all of you will learn this lesson, that there is a question on most applications that asks the question, have you ever been convicted of a felony? Now, let me just give an example. Let's say that you're an automobile mechanic and you have worked for 20 years at a General Motors dealership in their repair shop. But 20 years ago, when you fill out an application to go to work there, you signed that question in the negative. In other words, where it asks, have you ever been convicted of a felony? And you said no. And you were hired based on that answer. And you survived for 20 years. And in that 20th year, someone either investigates or is informed that your answer was not truthful. Ladies and gentlemen, that dealership has every right to terminate your position. Why? Not because you're not qualified, not because you were not a good mechanic, 
but you lied 20 years ago when you answered that question in the negative. So I want you to understand that it can catch up with you. And just because you have been a good mechanic, you have disqualified yourself because your credibility has been severely damaged. That is unfortunate and it's an unfortunate reality but if this is what happened in the case of Mrs. Lee, it is an unfortunate, self-inflicted wound. It's damaged her credibility. It has not changed her qualifications, except to the fact that maybe she wasn't qualified for the job in the beginning, if it required that she have those degrees of what she stated that she did have and what she alleged not to have. Now, in this particular case, this is even more important because of the fact that this position is in a medical facility. Credibility is very important when you're in a position of being directly involved with the livelihood or the life and death situations involving unsuspecting patients and citizens who are trusting their lives with your facility. They are trusting the facility's ability to hire credible people to look after them. Now I hope that you can understand what I'm saying here. So now, you know, I read one particular message that said that experience is better than a piece of paper. Well, not if you lied on that piece of paper, it's not. Because there's something wrong. If you have to lie about your credentials to obtain a job. And that in itself means that you were not qualified at the time that you applied for this job. Well, you can say, well, why, why did it take 14 years? Well, first of all, I want to say two things. Number one, some people mistakenly of the opinion that she was a CEO of Grace Mayer for 14 years. That is not true. She only became the CEO in January of 2020, which would make slightly better than four years that she's been CEO. Okay? Now, so, you know, we have to look at this thing in the proper setting, ladies and gentlemen. And we want to say, and we want to feel that they are taking advantage of her well, why didn't they look into this before? And I could share that view. Why didn't they look into this? But somehow or another, it got past the board of directors at or whoever the HR or whoever, it got past them. That was unfortunate. And it was most unfortunate for Mrs. Lee because of the fact that had they looked in the very beginning when she was first hired, or even prior to her being hired, they would have seen that apparently she did not have a MD, MH, a TH, I believe it's THD, theology, a, 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 a doctorate in theology at Emory University. And they would have found out that she didn't have the master's degree that she said or allegedly claimed to have at Wichita State. Now that's unfortunate. But when you're living a lie, and if that's the case, I'm not in a position to say whether or not she was or not, 
But I'm saying if that was the case, you cannot be surprised when after 14 years of employment, you finally discover. Now, let's be factual. There's no question in my mind that this only came up because of the fact so somewhere along the line, in maybe the last, I don't know, probably two, three, four years, maybe two or three or six months, I don't know, Miss Venus has pissed off or rubbed somebody the wrong way. And these people were aware of the fact that she didn't have the credentials that she claimed to have, that she put on paper, apparently in a resume, that she didn't have. And they went to an online private investigator who investigated and they, they revealed this information, gave them all the details, and that investigator looked into it and then brought it to the attention of Miss Venus Lee and questioned her about her credentials and could she validate those credentials. Now, as the story goes, she refused to validate or show those alleged credentials. Now, this was after the investigator had already reached out to Emory University in Georgia, which is a leading institution there in Georgia, and had confirmed that they did not have nor possess, nor had they ever issued two Miss Venus Lee, either in her maiden name or in her married name, or any other name that they could find under a Venus, anybody among their records. So then he contacted her to ask her if she could validate or verify that she did indeed possess such credentials. And I'm not going to say she could not, but she did not. She refused to reveal that. She revealed, refused to confirm that. And so then he made uh, a report on that. That report was then picked up by a Wichita uh, news media. And then they, in turn, reached out to WSU. And WSU confirmed that they had not issued a master's degree in anything to a Venus Lee or a, a Venus maiden name or married name. Now, at this point in time, when she was contacted by WSU, well, I'm sorry, she was contacted by a local TV station, she refused to validate that she had received that degree. She also stated at that time that she was not going to resign, nor was she going to show that degree or those degrees, okay? And so this became a big time story. Now, what happens is what always happens. When a story gets out and you refuse to comply you refuse to cooperate, and then the media reports on that story, people throughout the community start making and forming their own opinions. And then rumors get started. And most rumors are false, but believed by some, and sometimes by many. And then that causes people to start to spreading lies, misinformation, inaccurate information, and whatever. And that's what's happened on social media. So I want today to clear up the fact to the best of my knowledge. And as I've said before, I didn't respond to any of those messages on Facebook because I didn't have the facts. I don't deal in gossip. I don't deal in rumors and innuendo. I research. 
I find out for myself. And so let me just tell you what I found out. And here again, I'm not going to say whether or not Mrs. Lee lied about her two degrees, but I will tell you, one of the things I have learned, and this came straight from the mouth of Ms. Venus Lee. And this was on a video that I saw on YouTube. Mrs. Lee, who is from Wyandotte County in Kansas City, Kansas. Now, I watched a video where she talked about, and this video was less than a year old. And Mrs. Lee did reveal that when she was in Kansas City, Kansas, I think it was Kansas, maybe after she'd moved which up, but Mrs. Lee admitted that she had lied about her age to, to get employment at a Sonic drive-in. And as best as I can tell, she was never caught up in that lie. Now, so basically, that acknowledgement can lead one to believe that like a bank run, if you rob a bank and you don't get caught, you think that was easy. And I can do that again. And I won't get caught. You think if you can connive your way through life and not get caught, you continue to connive. You continue to connive. You know, it kind of reminds me of a certain former president <laughs> that we had here. Uh, but all I'm saying is, ladies and gentlemen, nobody has ever said that Mrs. Lee did a bad job performing her duties at Waste Mead. As a matter of fact, it's just the opposite. She's gotten quite a bit of credit for advancing the cause of Grace Mayer. As a matter of fact, on the same video that I watched, Mrs. Lee takes credit for taking that organization from three facilities to now, I believe, it's 17. Was she totally responsible for that? I don't know. But I do know in business, the credit always goes to the top, the head of the organization they credit. Sometimes they will admit they didn't do it by themselves and sometimes they enjoy taking all the credit. But either way, under her tenure, this organization has gone from three facilities to approximately 17 at this time. So she had to have been of some value to Grace Mead. But the fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, once you lie and you're caught up in that lie, all of the good you've done is erased because you've now lost your credibility. Now, we've seen this happen in law enforcement. We've seen this happen in the military. We've seen this happen in politics. Remember George Santos here just recently? And we've seen it happen in the business world. There's nothing unique about this. But in this particular case, if everything that I have learned from my research, what has happened here is this is a case of a self-inflicted wound that did not have to happen. It did not have to happen. Okay? But I find it very difficult to believe that if a person has 
the documentation to back up their claims, I find it very difficult to believe they would rather resign a high paid position than to reveal that documentation. I find that very difficult to believe. So I just want to set the record straight here. I want you people to understand that once you damage and destroy your credibility, no matter how many degrees you have or don't have, you claim to have or don't have your credibility is permanently damaged or destroyed. It is very doubtful that Mrs. Venus Lee, regardless now of her capabilities and her talents and her skills, will ever be able to get another job in the medical field that would match the position that she just resigned from. It's unfortunate, it was unnecessary, but it's self-inflicted. She has nobody to blame but herself. Now, that being said, again, I'm going to say, she pissed somebody off or rubbed somebody the wrong way. And that is what caused her position. That is what caused her to lose her credibility. I'm sorry. I hope that I have provided some accurate information and education to those of you who didn't quite understand that there is a difference, a vast difference, between making a mistake and telling a lie. A lie is very, very rarely comes without consequences when you're caught in. Mistakes are forgiven oftentimes because, look, we're all inhuman. None of us are without mistakes. But I hope most of us are without lies. You don't have to have it to get through life. Credibility is something that you must have to get through life. Honesty and effectively in this United States of America. Now, I want to say this before I close. My invitation to Mrs. Lee is an open invitation and anytime she wants to come on this show and give her side of the story, I'm open to it. Okay? It's an open invitation, Mrs. Lee, in case you're watching. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.